And I really cannot pronounce your last name, so I, I am so sorry. Would Just speaking you... tongues. <laughs> oh, ooh, hallelujah. All right, that's easy. <laughs> We want to welcome you up here. Sudeika is a friend of the house, and he is the national leader of the Foursquare Church and in England. And we're grateful. We love you, and we love your wife, too, let me tell you. I hope she's hearing this, too. We miss her and, and um, hope to have her next time around. But we're happy to have you, and we're looking forward to be blessed by the word that God has placed in your heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you. How are we doing this evening? You doing good? Excellent. Wow, what a beautiful name. The name of Jesus. You know, what a privilege that we have been given to use that name. We've been called by that name. We've been saved by that name. And you know, each time you speak that name, there is a prophetic anointing that is released. You know, Revelation says that, you know, the name of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You know, as you declare him, always know that there is something happening. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Hallelujah. You know, this evening, I want to share with you guys on being an influence, being a voice to your generation and beyond. You know, you are a social media generation. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, everything's out there. And, but you know, when you look at, you know, the influence that social media is making, there's good, but there's also bad. But what is God calling you? In this season what is God what is God speaking to you as his son as his daughter of this generation you know God called out Jeremiah to be a prophet to the nations and Jeremiah was like Lord me no you got the wrong Jeremiah he's the one on the next street God does not make a mistake you know, God does not make a mistake. He has not made a mistake with every one of you. I remember when, when the Lord spoke to me, you know, through a prophetic word, my first prophetic word. And the Lord said, I have a global vision for you. And I'm taking you into the nations. At that time, I had not, I had not even traveled out of Sri Lanka. I was not even married. And it just made no sense of what God said. Anyone got a prophetic word like that sometimes of, you know, make, you're like, God, no, not me. Remember Gideon? Gideon was hiding and, and, the, and, the, spirit, and the angel of the Lord said, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon would have been like, nah, not me. <laughs> but see, when the Lord speaks a word over you, treasure it write it down keep praying until it comes to pass it may not make sense to you at that moment but as you keep praying into it as you keep opening yourself out over a season the Lord will begin to move you into what he has spoken remember Joseph you know, when he received the word that he was going to be, you know, an influential man, he, the next moment he was down in a pit. And then into, a, into, a, into, a, into slavery, into prison. But yet, each step was a step towards fulfilling the destiny God had for him. And even for you as, a, as, a, as, as your generation... I don't like the word next generation because you are the, this generation. Am I right? You are this generation that, that influences. But each step is a step towards God fulfilling what he has for you. Hallelujah. So, you know, don't forget those words that the Lord has spoken over you. 
don't put them aside saying, ah, oh, nah, this is not for me. But grab hold of them. Don't let it go. You know, from the point where the Lord gave me that word to the point of me even leaving my nation, it took eight years, eight, eight nine years. And I don't think it's even completed right now. It's just partly being completed. But you've got to keep praying. You've got to keep obeying. You've got to keep yielding yourself. You've got to keep preparing yourself. And you will see what God can do. You know, you know your generation is a generation that, it's an exciting generation because there's so much of talent, there's so much of gifting within your generation. But there's also huge challenges. Much more than, you know, when I was your age, this generation has so much of challenges. And, but yet, God is calling each one of you to be a voice to your generation. Not a voice that is influenced by the world out there, but a voice that will be influenced by the Spirit of the Lord. A voice that will be influenced and anointed by the Lord himself. Amen. You know, this evening, let's, let's begin, let's go into Isaiah 60, 66, 6. Isaiah 66, 6, if you have your Bibles. And, you know, it says, the sound of an uproar from the city, the sound from the temple, the sound of the Lord rendering recompense to his enemies. It talks about three sounds. The sound of the city. The sound that is coming from the temple and the sound that the Lord is releasing. And I don't think that, that that has changed even in this generation. I don't think that's changed in this season. Because every city has a sound that it's releasing, a cry that it's releasing. God is still speaking. God has not stopped speaking. But then the response is, how do we respond with the sound that the Lord wants us to, to bring forth. Let's talk about the sound of the city. And that scripture, that, that verse says there's an uproar. In other words, there's, it's not a pleasant, it's not a, it's a cry. It may be a cry of suffering. It may be a cry of confusion. It may be a cry for safety and security. And you know, I want to ask you, when you walk your streets, what is the sound that you hear? What is the sound that you hear from your city? What is the sound that you hear from your generation? In your college, in your school, what are you hearing? What are they crying out for? Because God hears that sound. God hears that cry. Remember, in Exodus, you know, God said, I have heard the cry of my people. And God chose Moses to send him to answer that cry. And God hears the cry of your generation, your friends who do not know Jesus. Maybe some of you have friends who have, you know, who have attempted to take their own lives. What is your generation? What is, what are you hearing around you? Because we need to give ear to that. We need to hear what is the, what is the city speak which are crying out for? Is it a cry for justice? Because every city has a cry. And we as the church, we need to hear that cry through the heartbeat of God. You know, Luke chapter 13, 34, 35, Jesus was saying the sound of the city was a sound that had killed the prophets. And the heart of Jesus was, I wanted to bring you together. 
And the heart of God is to respond to that cry of pain. You know, in your school, what do you hear? Take time as you walk, as you sit, to listen. As your friends speak, what are they really saying? What are they really crying out for? You know, sometimes it could be a cry saying, I feel orphaned. I don't have a mom, I don't have a dad. I feel orphaned. The cry of pain. Because they, they, they don't know what love is. So they are, they are, they're looking for love that, that is corrupted. That ultimately chokes them. What do you hear them say? Because even as a church, it is so important because if not, we can get so disconnected from the world. But we are there to hear that sound and to respond to that sound. Respond to that cry. And we don't, we don't only hear the sound of the city because if you only hear that then we will not have hope we will not know what to do but we need to hear what is the Lord saying what is the Lord saying what is, what is he speaking to each one of you you know sometimes our culture prevents us from hearing what is God saying there's so much of pressure isn't it Sometimes even to say, hey, you know, I believe in Jesus is such a challenge. But yet you have something that the world needs. You have something that your friends need. I remember, this is about 30, 35 years ago. I, I tried to take my life. And I failed miserably at it because God, God, God's hand was on someone who saved me. I praise God for that because a week later, I came to know Jesus. <laughs> exactly a week later, I came to know Jesus. But someone heard my cry. And that person... reached out to me because I was, I, was, I was crying out because it was almost a situation with my dad. But Jesus broke through a friend of mine. And I believe that, you know, many of you here, Jesus will break through, through you, to your generation, to your friends. If we say, Lord, help me to hear what you're saying. This is what I'm hearing in my city. This is what I'm hearing my, 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 in my college. This is what I'm hearing down my street. But as you walk around, what do you hear? The next we read in, in that text is that there was a sound from the temple. That there was a sound from the temple. And I believe that the voice of the church is being muffled through our culture. But we have to release a sound that is going to make an impact. And you know, when I mean a sound, it's whatever you do out there. Even on a social media post, what do you put out there? Do you just put something random? Or do you put something to influence? See, we are called to influence, not to be influenced by the world. Amen? You are called to be an influencer. Because you have the answer that, that the world needs. 
you have the answer. You know, I, I, you know, your generation is such a creative generation. And that itself can be a sound into your, into your friends. You know, during COVID, when the first um, lockdown hit the UK, there was a sound of fear. There's a cry and saying, we fear death. We do not know what to do. And so my wife and I, together with my boys, we felt we needed to do something in our neighborhood. And so what we did was we, we felt the Holy Spirit leading us to write a letter to all the houses in our neighborhood to say, hey, we are here for you. This is what we do. But we want to create a community of support. And we were amazed at the response. And up to date, we have that community that works together. And that group began to support people in the area. Because we heard the cry of the city but we also felt, sensed the Holy Spirit saying, you release a sound, a sound of hope. A sound that will bring encouragement to the people down your neighborhood. So you bring a voice of hope. You are the voice of hope because you speak the name of Jesus. You know, Elijah, after his battle with the prophets of Baal, in, in 1 Kings, it says that Elijah heard the sound of rushing rain. Elijah heard the sound of rushing rain. Now, if you read that text, rain has not come yet. But Elijah hears the sound of rushing rain. Why? Because he hears what the Spirit is releasing over him. What do you hear the Spirit release over you? Not something that's already happened, but something that he wants to do. And then Elijah starts praying. He prays once, nothing happens. Prays twice, nothing happens. Three times, four times, nothing happens. Anyone, anyone knows what I'm talking about? But at the seventh time he prayed, he saw a cloud like a hand. That was the breakthrough. See, why did Elijah pray even seven times? Why did he not give up? Because he heard the sound of rushing rain. When we hear what the Spirit is saying, when we hear that, that, that voice of the Spirit, we are not going to give up. Even though we may not see it right now, we will not give up, but we will pray, we will pray, we will pray, we will pray till we see it come to pass. Amen? Don't get discouraged just because it does not happen once. Don't get discouraged and say, well, you know, I don't think, maybe, maybe I didn't hear the Lord. If you heard the Lord, you know you heard the Lord. You keep praying. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, Paul and Silas, they were thrown into prison because they, you know, they set a woman free and they were thrown into prison. And they could have easily said, easily be like, God, we are doing your work and now we are in prison. What did they do? They were beaten up, all that. They didn't, they did not grumble and complain and you know murmur. But they started to praise the Lord. They were singing and praying um, and hymns and you know they were praising God where inside a prison. 
what were they doing? They were releasing the sound of the temple. They were releasing the sound that the Holy Spirit was giving them. And you read that text. There's a sound being released right now. <laughs> what happened? The prison doors were open. The jailer and his, and his whole family, his whole household gets saved. Why? Because Paul and Silas released the sound of worship and prayer right in the middle of a prison. Come on, many of us are in a place where it's like a prison. And God wants you to release that sound of, of praise. God wants you to release that sound of prayer. He wants you to release the sound of the Spirit so that prison doors will begin to open. You know, you, when you read that text, there's an amazing miracle that happens. Not that the doors were open. None of the prisoners escaped. None of the prisoners wanted to escape. And I believe that the glory of God was right in the, mid, in, in the midst of that prison. And, and for those prisoners, that was freedom. That was freedom. You never know whom you would impact. You never know whom you would impact. See, what Paul and Silas did was that they shifted and changed the destiny of an entire household and an entire prison. Wow. By doing what? Releasing a sound. Releasing a sound. And the Holy Spirit did the rest. How many of you want to release that sound wherever you are? In your schools? In your neighborhoods? See, the easiest thing is to grumble about the neighborhood. You think you grumble about and complain about what's happening, right? Come on. But why not release the sound of heaven? Why not release the sound of the Spirit? It's great that we come together like this. But there's more to be done out there. What you, what you take from here is what you release out there. You know, even in the book of Acts, we see what God was going to do on the day of Pentecost. You know, that takes me to the sound of the Lord, God's response. You know, on the day of Pentecost, we see that when the disciples were gathered together, they heard a mighty rushing wind. They heard a mighty rushing wind and you know, we know the story of how the Holy Spirit was poured upon the 120 that were in the upper room. But here's the, here's the amazing miracle that God does. Later on in that chapter, we see that people who are living in Jerusalem, right, I'm, I'm, I'm reading from Acts chapter 2 verse 5, that those who are dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation, look at verse 6 says, at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered. See, God released a sound of Pentecost in the upper room and that was for the disciples. But then using that same sound, he draws the city together. And I said, there are 3,000 who get saved. Wow. The same sound that he will release over you is a sound he's going to use to touch those who need salvation. It's amazing what God, what God did on that day. You know, we, are, we always kind of hear about the sound of inside the upper room. But we forget the sound that was on the streets. 
we forget the sound that people heard and they were drawn they were drawn to the upper room they all came together and say hey what's what's this sound what's this noise and and people are gonna come to you and say what is this that you have because you have taken time to hear the voice of the spirit you have taken time to be in the secret place you have begun to release that sound people are coming to come and say what is this what is this because that same sound he releases over you he's gonna draw people come on God is moving you know in the morning services if you're not here I said how you know I was in Sri Lanka you know on in the month of July and there was a sound of desperation there was a sound of chaos in the in the in the nation but God gave us a sound to release over the church wherever we went it was a sound of hope and we saw people getting saved because because people around us were not having hope at all and they were open you know people of, of various faiths suddenly you know they, they, they were weeping let me let me just give you one story when we went when we landed I, I, I managed to get an uber but for some reason my app got jammed and it was a very good price and I'm like no way and then I felt the Holy Spirit saying you go and book that taxi and I'm like that's double the price Lord but I felt the Holy Spirit saying go because God wanted me to be in that taxi with my family from the point we got into that car I felt such a stirring in me to start talking to the guy and by the time we finished well by the time he dropped us I had led him to the Lord and he was weeping because the presence of God just came on this guy so what am I saying sometimes it may be uncomfortable sometimes it may be costly but if the Spirit of the Lord is leading you is giving you that voice speak speak the sound of the city the sound of the temple the sound of the Lord God's response because the sound that God releases establishes the direction which we are to go see society does not society is just disparate and you and I we have the sound to release and in this season what is he calling you to release and that's a question I wanted to answer tonight because our city needs your city needs you your school needs you my son you know since he was about 10 or 11 or even even younger every day he would go into his school and he would he would he would begin he would pray inside his school no one knew he was doing it but we felt that people needed to go into wherever they were and almost build an altar of prayer and he did it for many years right many years so that he could change the atmosphere of the school no one needs to know you're praying <laughs> why not in your office tomorrow morning begin and establish an altar of prayer a point of connection for heaven in your school down your street I remember many years ago this was back in Sri Lanka the Lord asked me to pray around our neighborhood 
and faithfully I did it for a week, two weeks, three weeks, for a month. And then it's like, okay, maybe I can miss today. And eventually I stopped. And I learned a lesson there. Because not a couple of days later, there's a guy who was shot and killed, not even 100 yards from my home. And I remember, I said, Lord, you asked me to pray, but I was not faithful. Be faithful to what God's called you. You may not see the answer, you may not see a fruit immediately, but as you keep sowing, as you keep sowing, those seeds are going to take root. And, and you're going to see, you're going to hear of things that may have happened. And you could then say, thank you, Lord. Many may not know what you do, but the Spirit of the Lord is the one who calls you. And so tonight, you know, it's a, it's a very simple message I, I bring to you. Be the voice of influence for your generation. And we have multi-generations here. Because each generation needs that voice of the temple. And you are the voice of the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So you are His voice. You are His voice. And so tonight, I want to pray over you you will receive that sound that you go and begin to release into your city, into your school, into your workplace, wherever the Lord has placed you. Amen? Why don't we stand up? Malla? You have something to share? You know, if the Lord, if the Holy Spirit just tugged something in you tonight, can you begin to just respond to Him? Just begin to respond to Him and open yourself out to what He wants to start releasing over you. Maybe for some of you, you need to start listening to the Lord. You've always said, oh, it's someone else. But tonight, the Holy Spirit may be saying, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Maybe for some of you, you did not realize that God was calling you for your generation. So just lift your hands to heaven right now. Spirit, would you begin to release your sound? Oh. Release your sound over your church. Release your sound over every generation, over these young people, Father. God, I just pray right now that they will begin to hear the sound of the Spirit. The sound of the Spirit. Lord, I pray for a supernatural moment for them to begin to hear that sound. Lord, would you open their ears that they may hear what the Spirit is saying, what, what the Spirit is releasing over them. Father, I pray in Jesus' name, if, there, if there's anyone who's saying, no, not me, this is for you. This is for you. This is for you. Oh, Jesus. Come on, let's just, you know, pray in the Spirit right now. And, you know, even, even say, Lord, open my ears that I may hear you. 
Lord, give me faith to believe. Give me faith to believe, Lord. Oh, shakaraba reke soko terandera buso. Kere ke ba santa kala ba kashoto la ba. Holy Spirit, release your sound over this your generation, over these young ones, over Lord, the not so young ones. God, would you release that sound that as they begin to walk their streets, something supernatural to happen. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, take a minute. What is the Lord telling you right now? What is the Lord telling you right now? During worship, and even as my dad was preaching, I was asking God, what do you want me to say to the young people in this room and just everyone? And I kept hearing, it's time to get out of your comfort zone. I kept hearing, like, it's time to move out of what you're comfortable with because that's the thing that's stopping you from going deep in the Lord. What you're comfortable with is just, okay, it's good here. But what God wants for you is so much more than what you're experiencing now. I saw a picture of two plates. One had like this big juicy steak and one had just like one french fry. And then most of us go towards the french fry because that's what we're used to. We look at the steak like, that looks good. But I'm not used to it. I've never tasted it before. I don't know what it's like. Maybe I'll be in the bathroom the whole day tomorrow. Who knows? Because when you go with the french fry, like, I'm satisfied with this. I'm satisfied with this small thing because it's what I'm used to. And Jesus is like saying, try the steak. It's there in front of you. Go ahead. If anything happens, I'm here. I'm here. I'm there for you. But I know this is fine for me. This is good. I'm comfortable with this. So that's all I want. But Jesus wants so much more for you. He's telling you, move out of your comfort zone. But sometimes I think something that has happened in our past, the way we've been brought up, things that have been spoken over us, it's like a wall. We can't get there. We want to. We want to. Be, with so much, we want to be deep in God, but there's something that's blocking us. And where we see a wall in front of us, Jesus sees like a, he sees nothing. It's like a brick for him. He can just like kick it over. There's nothing there for him to break. But it's just a step we need to take. As much as we say, God, give me more, it's not a chance for us to sit back, put our legs up, say, God, just give it to me. We have to sacrifice something in order for us to go deeper in Him. It's a two-way street. Jesus can't just give it to us just because we say we want it. We have to actually want it for us to go deeper in Him. Just as I'm standing on the edge of the stage, I'm just reminded of a diving board. You're on the edge of the diving board. And it's too late to turn back. So, and you don't want to jump. So it's like you're stuck where you are. You can't move. And you're fine with that. But it's not good to be fine with where you are now. Because you can't go back and you can't go forward because of what's in front of you. And God's just saying, just take the jump. Whatever's at the bottom, I'm there. I've got your back. You don't need to worry about the consequences because I'm there. Whatever happened in the past, that's the past. Don't bring it to the now. I died on the cross, so you don't have to worry about that. I just want to be with you. I just want to be close to you. I want you to be deep in my presence. I want you to have a hunger for me. There's, there's a hunger just all over this room, but there's room for more. You can never be satisfied when it comes to God. You can never be full. Because there's always more. He wants to give you more if you want more. That's what, that's the key. You need to want it for Him to give it to you. So even today, just ask God, give me more, Lord. I'm ready for more. Give me more, Lord. I'm opening my heart. I'm taking away all my traditions, all my rules, all my fears, all my burdens. I'm taking it away. Just give me more. I want more of your spirit more of your power, more of your love to fill me today. I want to leave this place changed. Even as I go into school, into my workplaces, I want to be your vessel wherever I go. I want, to be I want people to come out to me and say, wow, 
there's something different about you. I don't know what it is, but there's something different I see in you today. I've never seen you before, but there's like a glow to you. There's a light I can see in you. And I want that. I pray for opportunities wherever we go, that people will be drawn to us. We'll be like a magnet. That people will see the spirit in all of us. And that they'll just want it. But it takes a step of faith from us to want God to work in us. You might want to be on the big stages and to preach. That might be what God has spoken to you. But first, you need to let Him work in you. It first takes a step of faith and a leap of faith from you so that He can work in you. You have to open the door. He can't enter the house if the door is not open. You'll just be outside trying to get in, but you're like, sorry, I can't do that. You have to open the door. You have to take the step to open the door for God to move. Come on. How many of you want to open that door? How many of you want to take that step? Take that step forward. Come on. Take that step forward. Say, Lord, yes, I am taking that step. Thank you, Jesus. Start praying for them. Thank you, God. Don't wait for someone else. It's your obedience. It's your yes that that is going to release when what God is releasing over you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Praise you, God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit.
the glory. Yes, God, it's yours. And yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Let heaven, so let 